Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Doc Ed Padama. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung tinatawag nating scope and limitation of the study. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, napaka-konti lang ng tip and reminder pagdating dito sa part ng scope and limitation of the study. In fact, you can write this part of your study gamit lang ang dalawang paragraph. Isang paragraph sa scope at isang paragraph sa limitation. Pero pag-usapan din natin dapat ano ba ang mga laman ng scope at ano laman ng limitation. So kung mapapansin ninyo, that is already tip number one. The scope and limitation may each be presented in one paragraph. So each part should be presented in one paragraph. Okay? So the second tip is the scope discusses yung part na ng scope the scope discusses the inclusions ano yung mga kasama dito sa research na ginagawa ninyo so this may include the following but are not limited to yung sinasabi nating local or area kung saan nyo gagamitin o gagawin yung research ninyo and kung sino ang respondents ng research ninyo. So, ulitin ko, this is not limited to the following. So, ano pa ang pwede nyong ilagay dito? You can also reflect here on this part ng inclusion o ng scope yung um, uh, criteria na ginamit ninyo sa pagpili ng respondents, uh, description ng respondents ninyo, uh, instrument na ginamit ninyo, and so on and so forth. So, again, It is not limited to the local or the respondents but this is already advice that you include it dito sa pagsusulat ng scope. So yung scope ulitin natin, sino ba ang respondents ninyo, i-describe ninyo, saan ba yung uh, area kung saan nyo kinundak yung research. And then if you have criteria sa pagpili ng respondents, ano yung ginamit yung criteria, i-include nyo dyan sa discussion ng scope ng study ninyo. The other half or the other part of scope and limitation of the study is yung tinatawag nating limitation. Now, the limitations naman are exclusions, those that are not included in the study. But there are researches or studies na hindi nilalagay yung limitation of the study. I will advise against that. That is accepted but again, sayang yung part ng limitation. So, gamitin ninyo. Kasi ang limitation will serve as your silent lawyer. So, if your panel ask you why you did not include this in your research and nakareflect siya sa limitation ninyo and meron kayong limitation, you can always direct them and tell them na, Ma'am, Sir, Uh, it is reflected in the limitation of my study, the reason why I did not include or this was not included in the study. Okay, so let us continue. Limitations are exclusions from the study. Meron siyang characteristic that were beyond the control of the researcher. Hindi kontrolado ng researcher itong mga limitation na ito. So these happened, these limitations happened dahil hindi wala o hindi makontrol ng researcher yung pangyayaring yon Example situation of this is when the study uh, is scheduled to get the data from a class because the researcher is conducting an experimental study and kailangan niya makakuha ng uh, results from examinations of students in a face-to-face -face class during our conventional method of teaching. And then when the pandemic hit during the con co conduct of the research, the, the researcher has to adjust. Okay, so in this na face-to-face -face ang data gathering naging online and that should be included doon sa term na limitation. Because there are also times na ginagamit nila yung term na delimitation. Later on, di discuss natin kailan naman pumapasok yung paggamit ng term na delimitation. So again, when you use the term limitation of the study, ito yung mga hindi na isama sa research dahil sa mga pangyayari na hindi nyo kontrolado. Make sure you write the justification inside or within 
this part of your study. Now, sabi natin kanina, there is another term used in this particular part of the study and this term is called the delimitation. So, minsan makikita nyo scope and delimitation and then minsan yung iba scope and delimitation. So, when do you use limitation? When do you use delimitation? So, when you say delimitation, these are still exclusions. Yung mga hindi kasama sa study ninyo. Pero ang nag-decide is the researcher. Decided by the researcher. Merong condition due to justifiable reasons. So, anong example ng justifiable reasons? Dapat ang plano ng research is to get the data from all all classes in that particular level. But because of again the pandemic or because of time, uh, uh, kulang yung oras niya para makuha lahat ito, kinat niya to ng 50%. Okay? Because of lack of resources, kinat niya din o nilimit niya din itong area ng research niya. But be careful in using this kasi baka mag-backfire uh, sa inyo if uh, you were aware that uh, you did not have enough time then why did you choose this uh, large number of respondents? So be careful. Sabi nga natin, it should be justifiable. Okay? So this is uh, the conditions that needs to be met kapag ang gagamitin nyo ay limitation or delimitation of the study. So, this part of your research is as simple as that. So, just follow these uh, tips and reminders and then you will not go wrong sa paggawa nyo ng scope and limitation of the study. So, earlier sabi ko, we're going to show you a sample of this. Okay? And then, let's try to see kung ano yung ginamit ng researcher on this part of the study. Okay, scope and limitation of the study. So, as you can see, meron siyang dalawang paragraph na ginamit. Uh, okay, and then let's try to analyze. Uh, the first paragraph definitely contains the scope of the study. So, kasama dyan yung local, yung area kung saan conduct yung study, anong school year, and yung respondents. Okay. So I think all of you will agree on that. So that will uh, that will be tantamount or equivalent sa scope ng study niya. But if you're going to observe doon sa second paragraph, inclusions pa rin yan. So hindi siya limitation or delimitation. So si, parang itinuloy niya lang yung unang part ng discussion niya. Ilang groups ang ginamit niya and then sino itong mga group na ito and then ano pa ang included doon which is the pre-test and post-test uh, naging, na naging basis ng kanyang statistical analysis. So if you're going to analyze, hindi niya nagamit yung limitation or delimitation of your study. This is acceptable but again, I would advise against this kasi sayang yung opportunity na pwede niyong gamitin yung part ng limitation or delimitation of your study just in case it comes up, lumabas yung tanong sa defense ninyo kung bakit hindi na isama itong mga sumusunod. So you really need to double check kung talagang walang kailangan isama sa limitation or delimitation of your study. Okay? So marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat and again I am asking you to please Help the channel by clicking the subscribe button and click the notification bell. So, merong mga lalabas na uh, recommended videos on the side of the screen and then on the lower right would be my icon. So, when you click that, you are already going to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Stay safe and God bless. See you on the next video, everyone. Bye!